Uh, thanks for having me. Uh, my name is Naoto Kui. I'm an um, artist, a DJ, and researcher, and I'm the founder of C founder and CEO of Cosmo Inc. And uh, as Stefano introduced, I'm an associate professor at Keio University. And so my main question here is, can I help us, sorry, can, can AI help us to create new and original music rather than just imitating what we have already created? So I started asking this question when I was a university student at um, AI lab at uh, Tokyo University almost 20 years ago. And uh, I got into dance music and I started DJing and making music. And I wanted to make unique and original music, uh, music nobody ever listened to but I don't play any musical instrument and I don't barely read musical scores. So how can I make interesting music? So naturally I turn to uh, programming and AI. So what basically what I want to do is to make weird noises and rhythms unimaginable by myself to make people dance with some help from AI. Uh, I think it's almost inevitable to see Dali for music is coming soon, but what can we do other than make Dali for music? That's the question I want to ask here. So I have three topics to talk about, uh, what, I, what I learned uh, through my practice. And first topic I want to talk about is mis misusable AI tools for artists and musicians. So when you look back the history of music, you realize that it is in fact the history of misused and misappropriated new technologies. So I think one of the recurring patterns is when an artist used new technology in a way the original inventor didn't intend or imagine, it is when new form of expression emerged. And also let's admit that AI researchers and engineers are not usually the one who originate new music styles. So the turntable and sampler are prime examples. So you are not supposed to touch and move vinyl records by your hand. And samplers were invented to imitate expensive uh, physical instruments such as pianos and violins. And the inventor didn't expect users to appropriate somebody else's music such as amen breaks or funky drummers. But when it comes to the current AI music tools, I see both extreme ends of the spectrum. So there is a programmer oriented tools. So you have to be familiar with Python and so on. And on the other side, uh, there's very well packaged commercial tools. So it's easy to use, but what you can do with the software is narrowly defined in the software. So you cannot misuse. And obviously uh, the programmer oriented tools like Python and, and TensorFlow or PyTorch, it's almost impossible for artists to misuse directly. So I think what we need now is something in between something misusable AI tools for artists. So in this principle, I created a simple AI tool for musicians. It is an Ableton Live device and you can train your own variational autoencoder rhythm generation model on Ableton Live. So you don't need to 
you don't need to handle Python or CUDA or anything. You can just uh, drag and drop of your MIDI file, then the uh, the device, Ableton Live device, can uh, train your own models. And the crucial factor is you don't have to use models somebody else has trained. So you can misuse a device by training your own model with obscure data set, whatever you have. And it's available on GitHub. So if you are interested, please take a look. And this is a quick preview of what you can do with this device. I'm sure you can uh, hear the sound here. Yeah, so you can manipulate the latent vector with this simple XY pad. Okay. And you can automate the process and yeah, if you train a model with very uh, obscure data set, uh, you can create interesting data pattern as well. Yeah, so this is basically how I learned to stop worrying and love small and dumb, dumb AI models. And uh, I think uh, for using um, AI model in your performance or production, the model doesn't have to be well generalized because you are not looking for an optimal answer. You just need variations. And all, all you need is the, the ability to train the model by yourself. Then I use this device to make some tracks since then. Okay, then how about audio models? So right now, if you want to use the latest cool AI audio models, then typical process uh, look like this. Like you have to load the model in Python and uh, Jupyter notebook, of course, and tweak parameters in Python code and generate audio and preview on your Jupyter notebook and export it as an audio file and load the file to your favorite digital audio workstation and preview how the audio goes well with the, your composition, right? And back to Jupyter and tweak parameters again, and list goes on and nobody wants to do that. At least no artist want to, wants to do that, right? So how can we minimize this feedback loop? And, and I got a very simple idea. What if you can load any Python machine learning models in your favorite DAO, then uh, yeah, with minimal scripting, then it would be great. So that, this is how we started working on our AI audio plugin platform, Newton. And I'm sure some of you have already attended our model building workshop. So I'm not going to talk about it uh, in detail, but basically we provide an SDK to wrap Python machine learning models and uh, also we provide a universal plugin to load the wrapped Newton model. So, and we also provide the model repository as well. Yeah. And so you can think of Newton as a hugging face for audio plugin, especially real-time AI audio plugin. So as uh, audio creators, you can use the plugin to browse and load and use the latest AI models in your favorite DAOs. And if you are an AI researcher or engineer, 
uh, you can package your models and upload them to the new tone model repository so that uh, other musicians and creators can use the model in their favorite environment. And right now, uh, we have uh, a few interesting models like Tamba transfer models such as DDSP, Ray model, and also typical audio effect like reverb and distortion. And I promise more to come. Uh, so we are planning to make AI synth or MIDI models. And yeah, so please stay tuned. And the list I presented is now like this. Uh, load the model in new tone and tweak parameters while listening to the whole composition in real time. And if you want, uh, try loading another model. Okay, so it's much, much simpler. So I actually started working with a uh, New York based Japanese musician. Big Yuki, uh, and I had a very interesting session, very fun session in New York uh, last month. Um, and this is he, uh, this is him testing our Newton plug, Newton plugin with tambour transfer ray models. Oh shit! Yeah, what is the name? Soundtrack. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like his facial expression. Um, he got so excited. And yeah, sorry for his French, but uh Anyway, uh, it was so fascinating to see how quickly he found an interesting pattern. Uh, he converted Moog synths, a typical Moog synth sound, into violin with the rave model uh, uh, developed by Antoine uh, with his team at Ilcom. But, uh, well, uh, sorry, uh, the rave model proposed by uh, label architecture proposed by Antoine, and we trained this model on violin data. But anyway, uh, yeah, it's so interesting to see how actual musicians can come up with new ideas, new interesting ideas. And I cannot wait to see what he will come up with the plugin next. And as for uh, future plans, uh, right now it's Macintosh only, but Windows version will be available soon. And also we'll try, I mean, we'll make it uh, easy for artists to train their own models so that they can misuse the models and architecture. Uh, I think this is a crucial part and I hope this platform will raise awareness among musicians towards what they can do with AI and increase the demand. So then it will lead more research interest in the field. And also I believe uh, this is the best place to recruit new people. So if you, uh, if you have any interesting AI models, then please join us in the new tone Discord community. Uh, we need you. Okay, so it was about AI tools. Now I wanna talk about performing with AI, especially how I learned to embrace the uh, uncertainty and errors AI brings. So in 2019, uh, I helped to realize a performance with a famous flamenco dancer, Israel Garban, and an AI model 
uh, trained on his sapateado or tap dance. It was so interesting to work with. Very, uh, it, it was very interesting to work with somebody who came from totally different background, but he always said, like, I don't need a perfect copy of a flamenco dancer. I just want to be surprised by AI. And this resonated me a lot because I apply the same principle when I work on my own performance. So I've been actually working on a project called AI DJ project since 2015. Uh, it's a back-to-back -back DJ session. I'm, I'm wondering if you can hear the audio loud enough. Uh, is it okay? Uh, okay, cool. Uh, so, yeah, so I'm not going to talk about the technical detail, but AI is just set music based on what I play and match the beat and mixes it and even read the crowd. So how much people are dancing. And so usually AI DJ selects and plays very unexpected but reasonable songs. And I think this uncertainty leads to very interesting DJ performance. And again, this is not an attempt to automate the process of DJ. I just want to be surprised by unexpected but yet reasonable music selection of AI. So here you can see how AI is trying to quantify how much people are dancing. But it was difficult because in this uh, situation, people tend to be like this. Right? But anyway, um, so we are so fortunate to have opportunities to play various locations, including Google I.O. in San Francisco. And in 2021, we extended the theme and turned it into a real-time AI jump session. So instead of letting AI to select existing music, we made an AI system that makes music on stage in real-time. performance, uh, three AI models, rhythm generation, baseline generation, loop selection model, interact with each other and keep improvising dance tracks. So I as a DJ intervene the process by manipulating each set and adding sound with a timetable sometimes. And so I cannot expect what to come next perfectly. So always I play, yeah, always when I play with this system, I got so surprised. And yeah, it's kind of intimidating to play because you don't know what to come next, but it was so interesting. And here's some technical details. So rhythm generation, for rhythm generation, I use the same Ableton-like device. And for baseline generation, it was a LSDM-based sequence-to-sequence uh, model that converts drum pattern into baseline. So we trained the model on pairs of drum patterns and baselines extracted from the same song. I, but I forgot to mention, this is all uh, based on MIDI file, so symbolic level generation. And the, so the basic idea was to train a model to translate rhythm patterns into baseline pattern as if like drums and the baseline speak the same rhythmical concept in different languages. And as for the loop selection, uh, it was a CNN-based Siamese network 
And we first created pairs of loops of drums and bass line and corresponding loops containing other sounds such as melodies and calls and voice samples using source separation and loop extraction techniques. And then we trained the model with uh, triplet loss by using loops from the same song as positive samples and loops from randomly selected other songs as uh, negative samples. So the model becomes, becomes uh, capable of finding uh, corresponding good melody and vocal loops to uh, drum loop and bass line. Yeah, uh, so this is like evolution of the AI uh, DJ project. And it was super fun to play with this real-time MIDI-based mu music, music generation model. And sometimes it gave me like goosebumps when everything went well and funky but weird music was generated, but it was too demanding because we have, I mean, I had too many elements in the performance, like drum machine, synthesizer, mixer, and I don't know what to come next. So it was too much. So I started thinking like, how can I simplify the process and integrate AI and DJ more closely? And naturally I started working on audio-based uh, real-time music generation uh, system as a AI DJ project. I mean, the evolution of AI DJ project. So, well, it is still not feasible to generate coherent music in audio in real time. So I looked at the loop-based audio generation uh, model using uh, generative adversarial networks or GANs. And so I realized that I can buy time to generate the next bar while playing the current bar. And this is a simple prototype I made. What I did here is to input latent Z or W vector into a style Gantu model, trained on spectrograms of loops to generate spectra spectrograms in a batch. Then I convert them into audio file with Melgian vocoder. So I actually added uh, some Gaussian noise to the Z and W. So the generated audio files are slightly different to each other. And I, as a DJ, listen to these loops and mix them on the fly. And I use Newton effect on stage, of course. And actually in advance, I projected a bunch of different rhythm patterns like jungle beat, house beat to the latent space to get the mean vector, uh, mean latent vector of these beats. So depending on the mood, I can navigate through the latent space. So every, and then every time a new loop is generated, it gets simply uh, cross-faded. Okay, so this is the video quality is a bit uh, bad. Sorry, sorry about that. Everything you hear like now is something generated uh, near real time on stage. In this performance, I had a few different style gun models, then I mixed them with the traditional DJ mixer. Yeah, 
then I think the interaction between the DJ and the AI models got much more direct and integrated. So now it's no longer a DJ disc job. It's more like AI job or AJ. Then the performance went very well and I was so happy. But after the show, some people came up to me and said, like, what a great DJ set. And <laughs> I realized that they didn't realize that I was uh, generated. I, I, I generated uh, this music on fly with AI. So I started, I started wondering, like, am I still just imitating existing dance music and AI? And, not creating anything new. Then here, uh, I have like the last topic I wanna to talk about, uh, pushing AI to edge. Um, so in this section, I wanna ask this question, is AI itself capable of creating something new and original? And here I use again GAN model. Uh, I'm sure you are familiar with GAN framework, so I'm not gonna talk about it. But uh, uh, again, I use GAN framework to generate a rhythm pattern. And one addition I made was to add a genre label. So you can specify a genre of the generated rhythm pattern, like house, techno, hip hop. So this is what I got. Well, you know, it's nothing interesting and new and so then I extended the framework by adding an additional discriminator to uh, classify the genre of generative rhythm pattern so it's like critique uh, of the music generated and I trained the generator to confuse the additional genre creation discriminator as well. So that uh, I expect the generator to generate rhythm patterns that are realistic, but also don't belong to any genres in the training data set. Okay, uh, so this framework is based on this uh, famous paper can creative adversary networks uh, generating art by learning about styles and deviating from style norms. In this paper, uh, the author proposed this framework to uh, generate abstract painting, but I applied the same notion in symbolic level music generation. And this is what I got. Okay, uh, how does it sound to you? I think I, I really like the unique uh, group of the generated rhythm pattern. Um, it's uh, obviously unique, at least to me, and it doesn't belong to any, uh, you know, well-defined genre like hip hop or techno or house. And yeah, so this is what I really want to do uh, with AI. I mean, 
in this case, uh, I think you can think of the framework as an attempt to explore also untouched uh, territories between known concepts within the universe of rhythm pattern. I mean, you have original, oh, <laughs> sorry. You have original GAN uh, discriminator. So that original discriminator keeps your generation within, I mean, uh, original discriminator keeps your output within the known territory of uh, rhythm pattern, but there is, uh, I mean, there are many uh, untouched territories within this universe. So with AI, you can explore these new uh, territories between um, existing genres. And I'm currently playing the same framework. Uh, sorry, I'm currently applying the same framework to the spectrogram domain for upcoming performance at Mutech Japan uh, this year. And this uh, project was done at 2022 summer residency at the Stochastic Labs. I really appreciate uh, their help. And I think we could think of other losses other than you know genre ambiguity loss to drive the model diverging from the convention. That's one thing I really wanna uh, explore next. And now everybody is talking about like big text to image models such as DALI2 or Mid Journey or Stable Diffusion, which is uh, capable of generating high quality images from text prompts. Uh, this is great. Uh, this is um, obviously a great achievement, great uh, technical achievement. But at the same time, uh, many artists raise concerns that these models imitate and steal their styles. So this is a collection of artists whose styles were found in Dali generated images. Uh, there are many famous manga, comic writers, and uh, illustrators. And so how can we use AI to create something new, um, variable rather than imitating and automating human craft? I think now at no time was this question more important than now. Okay. I think I have 10 more minutes to talk. So here is little uh, conclusion of my talk. So I think everything I talked about was how to break out of your comfort zone or uh, social conventions or uh, you know existing genre or existing you know styles and common sense to create something unique and original. How can we do that with AI? And of course, uh, not all deviations are good and interesting. So you are the one who selects good one from bad ones. And then maybe you can expand the known territory or you know conventions and common sense to uh, enlarge our creative universe, so to speak. And if you train a model uh, on what's good right now, then, then basically every deviation or every you know, outliers is not good or mistakes, right? So I think uh, this is a very important task for artists to select and embrace uh, good deviations or good mistakes AI makes. And yeah, to sum up, I think we, as the AI music research community, I think we should strive to provide tools that artists can use it 
outside the original intention of the creator of the tool, I mean us. And yeah, basically uh, tools that artists can misuse, right? And I think now we see it with stable diffusion. I'm a big fan of artreader.com. So they provide a collage tool using stable diffusion model. And also today I saw one guy make a color palette generation tool with stable diffusion. I think stable diffusion or stability AI guys didn't expect something like this, but I think this is a very beautiful. This is a very simple tool, but I, I thought it's beautiful. And as musicians and creators, we need to know how to enjoy and embrace AI's mistakes or deviation from the convention to create something original, as I mentioned in the previous slide. And I always think it's like surfing on AI. So when you surf or when you catch wave and when you turn on waves, you have to be in the state in between active and passive, you know. So you should surrender in some sense. I mean, you should surrender to the wave at the at a certain level. If you surrender too much, you will uh, drown. So don't don't surrender too much. But uh, uh, I, I think you should surrender and let AI to bring you somewhere uh, which you didn't expect at the first place, maybe. And maybe you should anticipate where AI brings you, but should not stick to your preconception and expectation too much. So the question is, which one do you enjoy more? Like the water slide that brings you to somewhat the same destination, but it's very safe, and quick or waves. Uh, so you need to learn how to write, but you can enjoy it as you wish if you learn how to surrender or how to let loose. Uh, that's the question I want to ask uh, for all of you know, AI researchers or AI uh, musicians. I mean, musicians use musicians using uh, AI tools. Okay, uh, so this is one of my favorite quotes. And every time I talk about AI and creativity, I present this quote from Scott Adams. Uh, he's a famous comic writer uh, of this uh, Dilbert comic strip. And it, it goes like this, creativity is allowing yourself uh, to make mistakes and art is knowing which ones to keep. And in the context of AI and creativity, I think AI is a tool that helps you make interesting, meaning and amusing mistakes, like deviation from convention. And consequently, uh, it helps you to create something new and original. Um, so I want to think about like how, what, uh, what kind of AI tool that helps you to uh, make interesting, meaningful, uh, amusing mistakes. And yeah, actually I wrote a book. Uh, yeah, I think Stefano, introduced in the beginning uh, in, back in 2021. And I, I've been uh, working very hard to translate this book into uh, English. And the, the theme, main theme of this book is all about uh, what I presented in the last 10 slides. So, I need your help to uh, give some feedback and uh, your comments. 
So if you are interested, uh, please, please uh, reach out to me. Okay, I think I still have two minutes, but this is the end of my slides. Okay. Okay, thank you so much.